Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving, all of the fibre related things. Today's video is my promised 12 cast ons wrap up video. I'm starting with a bit of an apology because this intro clip is a little bit different from the rest of the clips that you're about to see because I sat down and recorded all of this yesterday and I went to edit this morning and for some reason I accidentally deleted and then couldn't recover <laughs> this first intro clip so I'm just having to record this again to say hello <laughs> so yes as always chaos ensues here and we're not starting out exactly as I had hoped <laughs> but the rest of the <laughs> The chatter and the clips were all recorded in one go, so I'm going to stop waffling and pass you over to Angela from yesterday, who will take you through what's going to be happening in this video. <laughs> in today's video, just as a quick summary, I'm going to be chatting about how you can enter the prize draw element of the make along if you choose to do so you don't have to but if you would like to be entered in for the prizes that we have up on offer I will be chatting or reminding you how you can do that I will also be doing an impromptu prize draw from all of the comments on the 12 cast on videos just as a way of saying thank you so much for all of your participation I'm going to be doing some community shout outs so I'm going to be letting you know what, what projects have been being cast on by our wonderful community members in the last few days I also thought it'd be fun to chat to you about what I didn't get to cast on so I'll shout out a few of the projects that I was hoping might come up on my prompt cards but didn't um, and then finally we'll chat about what happens next what I'm gonna do <laughs> now that I've cast on all of the things at the very end I thought I might do and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet whether it will just be a sort of photo montage or whether it will be a video and voiceover but I thought it might be fun just to run through all of the 12 cast-ons I didn't want to just sit here and pull out the cast-ons from the bags but also I'm very cognizant of the fact that when I've done my cast on videos I haven't linked to the patterns or the arms or anything below those videos because I wanted to keep it somewhat of a surprise each day as I was making those but I thought it might be fun or useful to have links to the projects and for you just to have a little recap of all of the things that I've cast on or all of the projects that I've started so I might leave that till the very end so if you're not interested in watching those all over again then you don't have to um, but for some folks they might want to see just a little roundup of all of the cast ons because we did stretch them out over the course of more than two weeks this time because I took that little break because of the silly virus ear infection that I managed to pick up. Okay so first off just a little reminder of our make along details and how you can enter the prize draw element of the make along should you choose to do so. So first off we're having a month long or just over a month long cast on party as you know many of you have been participating but there will be a prize draw from the cast on pot of entries all you need to have done to be part of that and you you can be continuing to cast on right up until the end of the month this part won't happen until the beginning of february sometime you need to either post a picture of your cast on over on instagram using the hashtag 12 cast ons 2022 you can, if you are a Ravelry user, you can pop a picture of your cast on in the cast on thread, the cast on prize draw thread over on our Ravelry group and the Ravelry group will be linked below. If you are not a social media user, if you use YouTube and that's about it, <laughs> then please do feel free to email me a picture of your cast on and I'll pop the email address on the screen now and please in your title or in the subject of that email if you could just put 12 the 12 cast ons cast on if that makes sense <laughs> just will help me to keep organized if I do have any entries come in that way I hope that is clear enough for everyone but if you do have any questions please do leave them in the comments below and I will answer as soon as I can Running alongside that, we will also have a year-long make-along to help to encourage us and motivate us to work on our projects and get them finished. Once you have finished your project, again, please post either on Instagram using the hashtag 12castons2022, use the finished object thread on Ravelry, 
or email me again the same address yarn and yarns at yahoo.com and please put in the subject of the email 12 cast ons finished object and I will do a monthly prize draw yeah hopefully we'll keep ourselves motivated to get some of our projects finished I'm a little bit behind with prize drawing because I still haven't done a lot of the prize draws from last year's 12 cast ons but it's on my to-do list over the next week or so is to update the prize pot I've got a folder on Ravelry and I keep all of the pictures of the current prizes that we have had donated to us in the little folder over there so that folks can generally choose what they would like to receive as their prize so I shall be doing that and then I'll be contacting some winners from last year that I need to catch up on I hope to get a little bit better going forward at doing a monthly prize draw video or something like that well I did start doing that last year and I kind of fell I fell off the wagon I fell behind so I apologize for that so those are all the ways that you can join in either just the cast on portion of the prize draw fun but how you can also keep participating in the 12 cast ons make along throughout the year any questions please just pop them in the comments below I'm wrapped up in all of the wool today <laughs> it's a very chilly day here in South Wales and the two things that I've got on that you can see most on the camera unfortunately I can't give you any details about because they were both gifted so I'm wearing a sweater that was knit for me and gifted to me by my wonderful friend Mandy it's just can you imagine someone gifting you a sweater it's just beyond belief isn't it so um, I believe it might be a Jen Steingas pattern but unfortunately I can't tell you which one and I'm also wearing a beautiful brioche cowl made from some hand spun from the lovely Ellie and again I'm afraid I can't let you know any details about the pattern apologies for that <laughs> it's a, a little bit mean of me isn't it wearing something on the video when I'm now getting asked more and more what I'm wearing and I I can't give you the details sorry <laughs> Before we get to chatting about what the community has been casting on since I posted my video of my 12th cast on, I did want to do a little impromptu prize draw just to say thank you to everyone for watching the videos, for commenting, for participating in the 12 cast ons in whichever way you wanted to, whether you were actually casting on or whether you were just commenting and cheering us on from the sidelines. So what I have done is I used, and hopefully I'll pop some videos over the top, I used a random number generator just on google to pick a number between 1 and 12 and it chose video number 10 and then i went to random youtube comment picker and put in the url for the 10th video from the cast ons and asked that random picker to generate a comment from that video and hopefully as you can see the winner was Jenny Mills so thank you so much for all of the lovely comments that you left Jenny um, when you see this um, please do contact me in whichever way you would like to direct message on Ravelry or Instagram or via email is absolutely fine there's a couple of options for you I've picked out two skeins of yarn from the prize pot um, these two lovely lovely pink skeins they are socks yeah from coop knits uh, they're 250 gram skeins in the leopard delight colorway it's a 75 superwash merino 25 nylon blend so definitely a knife enough to make some lovely socks if you wanted to or maybe pair together with some other yarns to put into a shawl or a bigger project so you could choose to receive those if you wish to however I'm not sure where you live Jenny or what your current circumstances or thoughts are I know a lot of people are trying to do stash downs at the moment and don't necessarily want to bring extra yarn into their house for someone who lives outside of the UK if I send a parcel there could be customs fees attached to receiving that parcel that you might have to pay so if you would prefer not to receive a physical prize of yarn then I will happily gift you a pattern anywhere that patterns can be gifted. If you're a Ravelry user, of course, on Ravelry, um, but I think we can gift patterns via Payhip and um, Lovecrafts and places like that as well. So yeah, just contact me and let me know whether you either want a pattern of your choice or whether you would like to receive the two skeins of beautiful Coop Knits Sockier yarn. This yarn is so lovely and soft, it's really lovely. I wish I was able to give a prize to everyone, but there were so many lovely comments, um, so many people participating, and yeah, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for all of the enthusiasm with which you have greeted the 12 cast ons this year. So now it's time for some community shout outs. I, of course, have finished casting on my 12th projects, 
but there's still plenty of time for you to get involved. The cast on portion of our make along goes right up until the end of January. So here are some of the projects that have been happening in the community. Catherine said that she's quite new to watching the channel. So welcome to the Yarn and Yarns community, Catherine. We're happy to have you. She said that she's carried over two works in progress from 2022, but has decided to join in the cast on fun and has cast on and finished and gifted a baby cardigan, which is super sweet. And has also started a cable hat and some socks. Vicky said that she has been using the cast ons as a inspiration to get some gift knits on the needles. So she's started some projects for babies due in March and has also started a pair of socks and has more socks and a sweater planned to cast on. Yeah, Vicky said thank you to everyone for the inspiration and for helping her to get these things on the needles that she might otherwise have put off. So you're more than welcome, Vicky. Thank you for joining our cast on party. Nicola has started a Lieblings cowl, a Ducot sweater, and they are both patterns for her. She's also started a jumper and a Christmas stocking for her husband and a hat, a jumper and a Christmas stocking for her daughter. I love that Nicola, lots of projects on the needles for both you and your family. Nina from the This Old Knit podcast said she's figured out what her 12th cast on is and she's going to be casting on a number 12 sweater. That sounds perfect. <laughs> but she said she still has a few more projects to cast on before she gets to 12. She thinks she's up to six or seven at the moment, but she needs to have a proper count up um, and then figure out what else she's going to be casting on before she gets to number 12. Jane has started a baby shawl, which she hopes will be for future great grand kids which is just so sweet and she also wants to cast on some double knit socks but is waiting on some new needles to arrive for those. Elizabeth has started a librarian vest which is a pattern by Skein Deer Knits and Elizabeth is using some vintage yarn which she purchased off eBay in this gorgeous really bright green colourway. She posted some pictures of that over on Instagram and it's just perfect for that vest so I can't wait to see that one grow Elizabeth. Jane has been working on her barn door cow which was a project that she's already cast on. She's also been working on a previous work in progress, Sea Glass Tea, which she said was inspired by one of my 2021 cast ons and my Sea Glass Tea is still a work in progress. <laughs> But she said alongside those, she's also cast on some vanilla socks. Marianne said that she hasn't joined in the cast ons this year because she's trying to work through her fibre stash. But Marianne, just in case you missed some of the earlier videos, spinning, new spinning projects are totally welcome to be included as part of, uh, as part of the make along if you wish to do so. Uh, Marianne said that she has been plying some Polworth with some Cheviot, which sounds lovely, and also is about to ply some Falkland with a sparkly merino, which just sounds so much fun. So love hearing about your spinning projects. Thank you so much for sharing those, Marianne. Davina said that she's been on her holidays, so I hope you are enjoying your holidays, your vacation, Davina. And she didn't think that she would get to cast on, but she managed to rustle up a few projects. So she's actually been casting on some covers for some golf clubs, which sounds like a really fun project. And she said she's cast on and finished four sets and has got another two on the go. She's also started a cross stitch, which is a picture of the River Thames, uh, an embroidered needle case, and has cast on a four ply cotton shawl. So welcome to the cast on party, Davina we are happy to have you. Susan has cast on what I think she said was her number eight project. I forgot to, to write it down so I'm going off memory. Was it number eight, Susan? Which is an incandescent hat by Anna Johanna um, which is from the Strands of Joy knitting book and she said that she's using some yarn that she got from Yarn and Yarns in the Halloween sock box so I shall look forward to seeing that one come to life, Susan. Teresa has started two pairs of socks, a cowl, a dishcloth, a cable scarf, and she said she's working on these projects all from Stash, which has made her very happy. Mary has been swatching for her next project, which is the chili pepper cardigan, and she's using some beautiful Dovestone DK from Bar Amu for that cast on, and Mary may well have cast that on by now because her comment was from a couple of days ago. Bub said that she's going to be spinning for a Midori sweater. She said she's also going to be starting a new modular knit as well. Fee has started a new spin, a fractal spin from some comb top, which has been dyed in some beautiful autumnal colours, which just sounds so amazing. I love that. 
it. I, you know me, I love my autumnal colours too. Finally, last but not least, Sharon said that she has been recovering from surgery. So I hope you are doing well, Sharon, and you are well on your way to making a full recovery and it hasn't been too arduous or too painful for you. She said she's been planning her 12 cast-ons because she hasn't yet been able to make a start. So yeah, lots of well wishes and love and hugs to you, Sharon. So yes, please don't forget that just because the videos have now wrapped up, um, that doesn't mean you can't continue to join the cast-on party and for you it will continue until the end of January so there's still plenty of time if you haven't yet joined or if you've added one or two projects and you want to add a few more or if you're working towards 12 <laughs> the same as I did there's still a few weeks maybe not a few weeks a week 10 days or so <laughs> 10 days, let's say 10 days, for you to get your projects on the needles. Okay, I thought it might be just a little bit of fun to share with you a couple of the projects that were on my prompt cards that I didn't actually get to do cast on or what my plans for those were. I've got some lovely patterns here, um, some of which were gifted to me and I'm sad that I didn't get to do cast all of these on but of course there can only be so many cast ons and it doesn't mean that these projects will never go on the needles, it just means they're waiting in the wings for their chance. <laughs> Maybe it won't be until next 12 cast-ons. Um, maybe I'll get to add a few more projects to my needles throughout the year, we shall see how it goes. But first off, I want to say a big thank you to Tracy, who gifted me the Fogline sweater last year, and I'll pop a picture of the designer's, designer's finished project up on the screen now. And I had planned to spin for this sweater. I've got a couple of larger quantities of fibre in my stash. I hadn't yet entirely chosen the colour to use but um, yeah unfortunately I didn't get around to starting that one this year. I also have the shift cow in my pattern library which was a kind gift from my dear friend Erin and again I was hoping to use some hand spun yarn for that but this year it just wasn't meant to be. I was also hoping to cast on a Wonderlight sweater and I've got a, co a quantity of Rowan yarn in my stash that I was wanting to use for this. A lovely sort of simple pattern by Tiff Nealon with a bit of texture in. I wanted to cast on a Miralat hat which is a pattern by Woolly Wormhead and was a kind gift by my lovely friend Louise. It's got a slightly unusual cast on <laughs> which means I think it was on one of my lists to try and cast on like when I rolled the dice at some point last year and didn't quite get to it so yeah, at some point this year, the Miralat hat will be going onto my needles, I promise. <laughs> I was also gifted by uh, the lovely Deb, the Garter Marla sweater, which is a pattern by Stephen West. And I was, ah, oh, I was so hoping that I might get to that one. And actually I had some of my hand spun yarns in mind to combine with some commercial yarn to knit for, for that cardigan. So yeah, I hope I get an opportunity to cast that one on soon. The one and only crochet project that was on my list was the Ziggy Interrupted Shawl. I had actually hoped to use some or one skein of yarn from my self-destructing yarn basket. I'm not sure if you watched that video where I was picking the yarns from my self-destructing yarn basket and there was a skein of yarn from Mr B which is like a grey base with lots of speckles and I was hoping to incorporate that into a Ziggy Interrupted Shawl but the dice did not have that in plan in mind for me this year. There were a couple of other pairs of socks that I was hoping to get to. I wanted to cast on a pattern that was gifted to me by my friend Angela and I was hoping to use some scrap yarns or some mini skeins to work through uh, the sock for that one. And also my friend Lou gifted me the Secret Garden collection of, pa of patterns and I knit one of those last year and I had hopes to cast on the second pair of socks from that pattern collection but it wasn't meant to be. And then finally, <laughs> there's quite a lot of projects isn't it, but one more that I wanted to mention. I was hoping to cast on a new gnome and not this time, not a gnome from Sarah Shearer. If you follow the channel for a while you know I've knit quite a lot of the Imagined Landscapes patterns but this was a pattern from Jen Edwards and I'll pop a picture of the gnome on the screen and Jen designed this specifically with hand spun yarns in mind and it just looks so cute. So I was hoping that the dice would be cooperative and allow me to cast that on but it just wasn't meant to be. Please do let me know in the comments below whether you are in the same position in that you have lots of patterns that you'd like to cast on but perhaps you don't have the time, the brain space, 
the needles, the project bags, <laughs> whatever it is that's stopping you cast on. Let me know what projects you've got lined up that you'd like to get to as and when you're able to because yeah I just I'd love, love to be inspired by all of the wonderful projects that you are casting on or that you want to cast on. So yeah I'd love to know if you're in, in the same boat as me and have some projects that didn't quite make it onto the needles for your cast on party this year. I've just gone to grab all of the project bags <laughs> with my 12 cast ons in them and I can't even there's still two more on the floor because I can't hold them all at once. <laughs> I need to find space in the shelves behind me. If you have watched the channel for a while you know that oftentimes I actually sit on the floor um, just behind me. There's like a cut out alcove in that wall with some shelves and I keep my works in progress project bags down there so I need to try and find space for all of those new <laughs> works in progress down there so I'm gonna be having a good sort out this afternoon but I thought it would be time to confess now that I've done my 12 cast ons just exactly how many works in progress I've got on the needles and this is only counting like my knitting and crochet project or the things that I'm spinning that with the intention of casting on straight away so altogether after the 12 cast ons I've got 27 works in progress on the needles which actually it's not the worst it's ever been I have definitely had over 30 before so I'm not feeling too panicky about that <laughs> I know for some people probably me just talking about this is sending them off into a panic so apologies if that is you but I am someone who enjoys working with lots of choice and lots of things that I can pick up and go to depending on my mood and my concentration levels I've got projects that are easy knits, I've got things that need a little bit more concentration and I just love having that choice. I'm someone who feels more stressed and more panicky um, when I only have one thing on the needles. I have tried doing that before but I tend to procrastinate. If I tell myself I can only work on one thing it just doesn't get done because I will put it off and I'm not always in the mood to work on just one specific thing so... I get more done by having more on the needles than if I had less projects on the needles which I know might sound a bit back to front to some people but we're all different and I love the fact that we all have different ways in which we work and different things that motivate us. In total I have <laughs> 11 sweaters on the needles which I do hope to bring that number down this year. I would really like to always be working on a sweater work in progress and I would like to try and work through at least six of those this year if I can. They're all in various stages of progression. Obviously there's quite a few that have just been cast on but there are some that have been on the needles for a while. I've got two pairs of mittens or glove projects. I've got four projects which are shawls or cowls. I've got four pairs of socks. I've got one hat and I've got four no, five projects which are classed as other. So that's like blankets, toys, my scrub bucket bag, my advent garland. They're all sort of in that other category. I've got a couple of weeks or 10 days, whatever it is. <laughs> I think I'm in denial about how long is left in January to work on whatever I want. I'm not going to be too prescriptive about what that is. Now that I've cast on my 12, the temptation is to concentrate on the shiny new things but I do also want to progress some of my older works in progress so from next month from February I'll be going back to my dice roll game and if you've been following the channel for any length of time you'll know that this is just a way to, that I use at the beginning of each month a little fun game um, to bring in a little bit of randomness a little bit of game of chance a little bit like the 12 cast ons just to help me focus down on a few projects and I usually roll the dice four times to give myself four projects to try and work on during a particular month so that will definitely be coming back in February but in the meantime I have picked I have picked out a couple of projects that I would like to work on for the next 10 days or so just to see how far I can get with them not specifically connected to my knitting I do have a couple of spin projects that I'm hoping to progress so I'll chat about those first and I'm using hashtag spin 15 a day to help me progress this this is a sort of a little initiative or a little challenge a self challenge that is spearheaded by 1764 shepherdess over on Instagram and the idea is just to set yourself a little challenge to spin for 15 minutes a day uh, as the hashtag implies 
just to help you work through or progress a project. So I've actually got three projects that I'm trying to spin 15 minutes a day each on. So yes, that is 45 minutes of spinning time. But in the evenings, it's just me, James and the cat. So I do have the luxury of having quite a lot of time to spend on the things that I want to do. I am spinning 15 minutes a day on my Love Note sweater spin. And that was one of my 12 cast-ons from last year. And I've been doing that all through January. And so far, I've actually I'm making pretty good progress. I think I have spun at least two of the bats that were in my basket and I've started the third. So I'm really happy that that's helping me to chip away at that spin because that has been neglected for far too long. I also have a drop spindle project. Last summer I combed through an entire Shetland fleece. I'm just gonna take my gloves off because I'm actually getting a little bit warm up here. Um, but I combed through an entire grey Shetland fleece and I'm now spinning it on my drop spindle. So my aim is to try and work on this for 15 minutes a day until the spin is finished. There is a lot of fibre to get through. I think I ended up with almost 500 grams worth of fibre from my fleece. So, and I'm spinning it quite fine. So it's taking a little while, but again, by spinning 15 minutes a day, I'm making some pretty good progress. I've already spun through, I'm trying to spin about 20 grams at a time onto my spindle and I've already filled up one spindle and as you can see I'm making good progress on the second spindle full. And then the third project is a support spindle project and if you followed my Vlogmas series of videos you know that I did a advent fibre swap with my friend Lisa and I'm working my way through on my support spindles the quantities of fibre that Lisa kindly gifted to me in that advent swap. So I shall be working on those throughout January and actually those three spins I think will just carry on with me, will carry through with me until they are complete. So I suspect I'll be working on most of those for at least the next couple of months. As far as knitting goes, I have picked out for the next couple of weeks to work on one of my older works in progress and one of the 12 cast-ons and we'll chat about the 12 cast-ons first. It is my advent mitt garland that I have chosen to work on because my thought process is I'd like to try and get at least two little mitts knit up each month so that by the time we get to December I'll just have a couple left and that advent garland might hopefully be ready to display next Christmas. I'm giggling because I always have <laughs> good intentions at the start and two little mitts a month seems like an achievable goal but you know these things do take time and small projects sometimes the fiddly bits can take longer than you anticipate them doing so and actually as it's been a couple of days since I finished my last cast on I have already picked up this project so I'm giving you a little sneak peek for my sort of end of January making and I've finished the first little mitten, all bar the hanging loop. I need to knit some eye cord for the hanging loop, uh, but I'm working my mittens on magic loop and I didn't. I don't wanna do eye cord big long needles because it's just a real faff. So I need to hunt out a pair of um, double points that I can put in this project bag and be ready to knit the eye cords as and when I finish the mitts. I shall be working on these. I have started mitten number two. I cast on last night but it was quite late and I was quite tired. So literally I just did the cast on and the Latvian braid for mitten number two. But with any luck, by the end of January, I will have my first little goal ticked off of my list and I'll have two mittens knit for that. Depending on what time I have, I might also aim to cast on the third because while I've got enthusiasm for it and motivation, if I could get three done in January and three done in February, then it means that by the end of November, if I can keep up my schedule working on these, my advent will be completely finished and I wouldn't be knitting any in December at all. So yeah, we'll just see what I have time for, see what I have inclination for and the brain space for because obviously colour work need to be in a space where you can concentrate a little bit more and follow the chart. And then to try and accomplish my goal of both always working on one of my sweater whips and always working on one of my older projects, I will also be working on another project which is 12 cast-ons related but it's from 12 cast-ons last year and that is my oops simple stripes sweater and I've already pulled stitches off of the needles bear with while I pick that one up. I have 
almost finished. I've been working on this. I worked on this the last couple of weeks in December and I've also been low-key working on this in the background um, even though I've been doing my 12 cast-ons. If there's been a time where I've been sat at my desk waiting for videos to process and things like that and I needed to not have to concentrate on something new going on the needles. I have kind of cheated on a couple of days of my 12 cast-ons and I've added a row or two here and there on this sweater. Almost, almost at the point now where the body is done. I'm working on this brown sweater and then I'm gonna do one more stripe in this lovely chartreuse greeny colour and the sweater body hopefully will be done. I'm working this in five beautiful skeins of yarn that were naturally dyed by Flourish Fibres, the lovely fee. And then of course I will need to go and do the sleeves so I'm pretty hopeful that by the beginning of February at least, I don't know if I'll get two sleeves knit on four ply in the next 10 days or so, I'm pretty hopeful that if I can carry that through it won't be too long until I get that one finished. So yeah, simple stripes, advent mitts and some spinning will be carrying me through the rest of January. Please do let me know in the comments below which of your cast on projects or which of your works in progress are keeping you company for the rest of the month. Also you might remember me saying back maybe at the beginning of this or maybe in Vlogmas that I wanted to participate in Tracy of The Passionate Spinner is having a year-long make-along um, 23 in 23. And the aim is to try and finish 23 projects that were started prior to the beginning of 2023. So my spinning, my spindle spinning and my love note spin will all count towards progress to those and if I can get my simple stripes sweater done, that will also count towards that make along. So in the back of my mind, I'm always going to be aiming to work on my older projects for that make along too. And to get 23 projects finished by the end of the year, um, similar to my advent mitts, I'll need to try and finish at a rate of two projects ish a month. <laughs> I've already finished one project for that which was a spinning project so I'll chat more about that when we do a wrap up, a, Gen a January wrap up video. Okay I think all that is left to come now is a little either photo or video montage, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do of the 12 cast on projects this year where I got to each day so I'm gonna say my goodbyes for now um, even if I do a voiceover this is it for the sitting in front of the camera chatting section of the video so I hope you enjoyed my little 12 cast-ons wrap up um, a little chat about what I'm going to be doing to approach all of my projects now that they're on the needles again please do feel free to continue to cast on yourself the cast on portion of the make along goes until the end of January and yeah if you do continue to cast on let me know in the comments below what projects you start. Thank you so so much for all of your participation, for the enthusiasm with which you have greeted this make along again this year. It has really been an absolute joy for me to read all of the comments, to see posts popping up on Ravelry and over on Instagram with all of your works in progress and just to be reading about them in the comments below. Um, and if you haven't cast on, thank you for watching and for encouraging everyone from the sidelines. There's been quite a few comments on these videos of people just saying how inspiring it is to hear about everyone's projects. And a few people have commented to say that they're going to be implementing their own dice games and things like that to help them work through their own pile of works in progress. So yeah, that just makes me so happy to hear. Thank you so, so very much. Um, if you have bought me a coffee in the last few weeks, if you've signed up to Patreon as a way to help support the content that I make here, then um, an extra thank you to you as well. You help make it possible for me to continue to make these videos. I'm going to sign off, although the video will continue in some manner. I will certainly be back again soon with some more making content here on the channel. So I hope you will join me for the next video. But until we do get to spend time together again, I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great with Willy Hugs to you all. Bye for now. Bye! On day one of the 12 cast-ons I started a Bregne sweater and it's a pattern by Fibre Tales. I'm using some beautiful yarn from Thick Skein. Fortunately their dye shop is not currently open at the moment but hopefully they will come back in the future. It's the Ginger Snap colourway and I'm keeping my project in this beautiful bag that was a kind gift from one of our community members, Christine. On day two of the cast-ons, I started the Lunar Mitts, a pattern by Anne Yunston. 
and it's in an issue of the Shetland Wool Week volume 4. I'm using some lace yarn which is hand spun. This cable wants to get in the way. <laughs> and the fibre originally was from Wildcraft UK, a wool and silk blend in their rock pool colourway. I'm keeping that project in this beautiful bee project, bee themed project bag from Mindful Magpie. On day three, I cast on the Heptagon Time Shawl, which is a pattern by Nick Davis. The pattern was kindly gifted to me by Maraid. I'm using a combination of my different hand spun yarns, including some of these really fun singles yarns. They're gently thick and thin, spun from an art bat. I'm combining those with this beautiful luminous green colour, which originally the fibre was Blue Face Lester from Curio Stitches. And on the cast on day, day three, I also spun up some black Corridale. I think it's Corridale, it's either Corridale or Merino might be might have been merino actually and i'm planning to incorporate the black into the shawl as well for optimum witchy vibes <laughs> and that's living in this lovely bucket bag from eldenwood craft on day four i started a sunburst sweater which is a pattern by james n watts and the pattern was kindly gifted to me by ruth i managed to knit the two squares that will form the center of the front and back panels of this sweater. I used some leftovers from a fibre advent swap that I did with my lovely friend Caroline of Colourful Creativity. I also started spinning up the first of several hand spun yarns that I'll be using to make this sweater. And so on the bobbin you can see the pumpkin pie colourway from Ashford, merino yarn which was a kind gift to me from the lovely Christy, one of our community members. I'll also be definitely spinning up these bobsleigh bats from Hobbledy Hoy, which were a gift from my friend Lisa. Currently that project is living in this little bag from Anne of the No Excuses Knitting Podcast. It's big enough to accommodate the two centre squares and my pattern. As soon as I've spun up a yarn or two though, I think I will need to move to a bigger project bag, but it's fun to keep these little squares in that bag for now. On day five, I started a Carlina sweater, which is a lovely pattern by, I think it's Whitney Hayward. I'm using a combination of some beautiful gifted yarn from Attic Spin Dye in the Angie's Foxes colorway. It's a non superwash yarn. I'm pairing that with a gradient hand spun. The fibre was originally dyed by Hilltop Cloud and I received it in an exchange with my lovely friend Jeanette. The Carlina pattern was a kind gift from our community member Tracy and I'm keeping that in a project bag, a nice Christmassy project bag that was also a gift from Pamela, one of our other community members. On day six I cast on the lovely Wildflowers cap which is a pattern by Mary Jane Mockleston originally featuring in the Flora issue of Making Magazine and I am using some beautiful Mendip DK yarn from Marina Skewer and I'm keeping this project in this fun flowers and gnomes garden project bag which was a gift from my lovely friend Sylvia. On day seven I cast on a ripple caramel by Jessie May Designs and I'm using two skeins of beautiful yarn from Attic Spin Dye. This was from their Birds Colourway Club and in the Wren Colourway. I'm keeping that in a, another self-made project bag. On day eight, of course, I cast on the lovely Scrub Bucket pattern, which is by Tracy of The Passionate Spinner. I'm keeping my bits and pieces in this beautiful project bag that was made and gifted to me by my friend Jeanette. And inside here is a whole plethora, a wealth of orange scrappy goodness. <laughs> On day nine I started the Mitten Garland Advent Calendar, a pattern by Kathy Lewinsky. I'm using a combination of Rowan Valley Tweed yarn and Jameson and Smith Spindrift for my project and I'm housing that in a self-made bag that was made from some gifted fabric from my friend Lisa. For day 10, I cast on a dappled light shawl, which is a pattern by Carrie Bostick Hogue in the forest issue of Making Magazine. I'm using some of my 
hand spun singles spun on drop spindles and I'm keeping that in another self-made project bag from some fabric that was in my grand's stash and is a very dear to me project bag. On day 11, almost as the cast-ons were finished, the dice were finally kind to me and I got to do cast on a pair of socks. <laughs> and I started the gingerbread colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. That's going to be living in my gnome or my gonk, however you like to refer to them, project bag, which I purchased from Curly Emma on Etsy. And then of course, last but by no means least, day 12, I cast on my mid-coast sweater. Again, impossible to share with you because it's all scrunched up on the needles. This is a lovely colour work pattern by Jen Steingas and I'm using the most beautiful Cartrev yarn for this project. And that's going to be living in this beautiful project bag, which was a gift from Kate, or at least it will be living there until it outgrows the project bag. <laughs> Hopefully by that time, I'll have finished one of my other sweater whips and will free up a project bag. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to admit defeat at trying to squeeze all of my project bags into their home on the shelves in the craft attic. This pile does not even include the two projects that I'm currently working on. So I best get knitting to turn some of these into finished objects and clear some space. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this 12 cast-ons recap. I shall see you in the next video.